الحديث الثاني والعشرون the twenty second حديث عن حذيفة بن اليمان رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال كنت مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في سفر فبال وتوضع ومسح على خفين مختصرا this حديث الإمام البخاري رحمه الله he narrated in كتاب الوضوء and also كتاب المظالم and two places and Imam al-Muslim narrated this hadith in Kitab al-Tahara but we have to point something out regarding this hadith Imam al-Zarqashi in Kitab al-Nukat he said Imam al-Zarqashi in Kitab al-Nukat and I remember that book is to point out the mistakes that Abdul Ghani Abdul Wahid al-Maghdisi basically did in terms of the hadith which he brought in this if they're not Bukhari and Muslim, he, catch, he catches him out. So Zarkashi, that's, his, that's all he's doing here. So Zarkashi, he said, Hadith Hudayfa, referring to this hadith, um, which is to wipe over your khuf. Uh, Abdul Ghani Abdul Wahid al Maqdisi mentions it muhtasar, meaning abridged. Very abridged. But its wording, meaning the wordings is in Sahihain, meaning the overall meaning, which is that. It says that Kuntum Al Nabi I was with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fantahi Fantaha ila that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and he ended up in a Sibata, a place, a open land, a farmyard. Qawmin of a people, Fabala Qaim and the Prophet urinated standing up. Fatanahaitu I went a bit further from him. Hudayfa saying this. Fakaladnu, the Prophet said to become close. Fadanautu I came close, minhu to the Prophet Hak Hata Kumtu in the Akibi. Until I came very close to him, next to his hill. And of course he, he passed him over, over water. The Prophet done wudu. And then the wording of Muslim says, فَمَسْحَ عَلَى, على خفيه, He wiped over his khufayn. Abdul الْحَقِّ الْإِشْبِيلِ who has a book called Al-Jam'u Bayna Sahihaini, meaning bringing Bukhari and Muslim together. He says, وَلَمْ يَذْكُرِ الْبُخَارِ Bukhari did not mention that extra part which is فَمَسْحَ عَلَى خفيه. He wiped over his khufayn. Bukhari didn't mention that. He said, وَلَمْ يَذْكُرِ الْبُخَارِ فِي رِوَايَةِ هَذِي الزِّيَادَةِ Bukhari didn't mention it. وَعَلَى هَذَا أَمْ بِكَوْزَ دَنْ فَلَا يَحْسُنُ مِنَ الْمُسَنِّفِ عَدُّ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ مِنَ الْمُتَفْقِي عَلِيهِ He said, he's not right and he's not befitting for the author, meaning Abdul Ghani, Abdul Wahid al-Maqdisi, to consider this hadith from the hadith which are agreed upon by Bukhari and Muslim. You see? So this wording, this wording, this actual wording right now, the way it's worded here right now in this hadith, Neither Bukhari and Muslim have narrated it. But they, and so Zarkashi's wording, Zarkashi's speech is also wrong. Hmm. It's wrong. So uh, it's not in the Sahihain. The last part, Fama Sahala Khufayi Dam. Dam. Fiqh of the Hadith. The Fiqh of the Hadith is Mashru'iyatu, the permissibility of Al Masu al Khufayni. To wipe over your khufayn fi safari whilst a traveler badala min ghasli rajlaini then if then what then wiping then washing your feet meaning choosing to wipe over your what the permissibility of wiping over your khufayn at a journey instead of washing your two feet it's from the great things of the sharia number two المسح يكون بعد إتمام الطهارة. That the مسح is when after when after the person what completes his طهارة after the completing of the طهارة. Number three, the wiping over is after what after completing your طهارة بعد إتمام الطهارة نعم. Number three. أدخل أهل السنة أهل السنة have put in the wiping over the خفين in the books of عقيدة to go against and refute ها لمنكريه من أهل الأهواء والبدع والزيغ to be opposite to the people of innovation and misguidance who are on the other side ولذلك ابن الدقيق العيد سر هي إحكام الأحكام he said وقد اشتهر جواز المسح على الخفين عند علماء الشريعة حتى عدى شعارا لأهل السنة وعد إنكاره الشعار لأهل البدع. he said it became very famous. 
ha and well known of the permissibility of wiping over your khufayn according to the ulama of the sharia ah. to the extent that the people to the extent that the scholars have considered wiping over your khufayn as a symbol for ahl sunnah and also considered um, rejecting it um, a symbol of innovation for Jawazil isti'anati bighayrihi fi tahara The permissibility of seeking help huh, from somebody for a matter of purification such as to bring you water or to pour water over somewhere for you. Five, the good manners of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and his teaching. Fawaid, benefit, uh, this is the fiqh that we took from the hadith. The, these are additional information that I'm going to give you. And they are as follows, additional information. And they're just ahkam, general rulings that are pertaining to Mas'ah al khufayn The first point is that the, the wiping over the khufayn and the jawrabayn. Jawrabayn is anything that is other than the leather socks. It, it can actually be normal socks. It can be anything other than that. Socks. Jawrabi socks. Wiping over the leather socks and normal socks. Um, there's no difference between the two. Ibn al-Qayyim in his Tahdeeb al-Sunan, he says, لا يظهر بين الجوربين والخفين فرق There is no difference that's apparent between the jawrab and the khufain, um, a difference that is uh, effective, that we can say, wow, that's a big difference. Naam. In his Kitab Tahdeeb al-Sunan, Ishaq ibn Rahuyata, as Ibn Hazza mentions in his, in his Kitab al-Muhalla, he says, Madat al-Sunnah, the Sunnah has been on and it's been going on. Min ashab nabi from the companions of the Messenger. Wa man ba'adahum, and those who came after them. Min al-Tabi'ina, from the Tabi'in. Fi al to wipe over the socks. The socks. Al-Jawrabayn, not the Khufayn, Jawrabayn. La ikhtilafa baynahum fi thalika, without there being any dispute amongst them. The second thing is, هل يجوز, is it permissible to wipe over your shoes? Yes, it is permissible. Um, Ibn Hazza mentions that in his Kitab Al-Muhalla, Ibn Turkumani in his Kitab Al-Jawhar Al-Naqi, he also mentions it, and he says that the hadith is authentically narrated from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Tirmidhi narrated. The sec- and Shaykh Al-Albani in his Kitab Tamam Al-Nusr, in his kitab, Tamamul Minna, Tamamul Minna, sorry. Al-Bani, rahimahullah, he said, عرفت, if you come to know, after, the, after he spoke about uh, the hadith of, uh, the, sorry, after the, it, 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 the, the call of Ibn, uh, Ibn Turkumani, Shaykh Al-Bani said, إِذَا عَرَفْتَ if you come to know, هَذَا, that which, the fact that uh, Tirmidhi had authenticated the hadith and the science regarding it and authentication, Shaykh Al-Bani said, فَلَا يَجُوزُ It is not permissible التَّرَدُّدُ to start to doubt and say, hmm, في قبول هذه الرخصة to accept this رخصة this ease this leniency the Sharia gave you بعد ثبوت الحديث بها after the hadith is strongly transmitted to you number three the shoe sorry the socks or the leather socks the جورب or the خف المخروق which is ripped it's got a hole in it the third one um Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in his Masail al-Mardaniyah in his Masail al-Mardaniyah rahimahullah he says فأكثر الفقهاء على أنه يجوز المسح عليه the majority of the scholars are of the view that it's permissible to wipe over it and he also said the same in his kitab اختيارات الفقية in his اختيارات الفقية he said ويجوز المسح على الخف it is permissible to wipe over your خف المخرق that is ripped. Ma da masmuhu baqiyan. As long as its as, as long as its name still remains, still as, as long as it's called a socks. But if the whole leg if it's ripped fully, then it's not called the socks in. It's you're barefooted. But it means as long as it, there's people still say, oh, you take your socks off. You can still wipe over it. And he brought a good argument. Um, Abdul Razak ibn Hamam al Sanani. He narrated it in the Sunnah. Pay attention to this. Oh, and Bayhaqi rahimahullah in his Sunan al-Kubra, from who? Sufyan al-Thawri. That Sufyan al-Thawri, he said, imsah alayhima. 
ما تعلقت به ما تعلقت به رجلك. He said, wipe over that which your legs, you put your, on your legs. Wipe over them. Sufyan al-Thawri said that. And then he said, وَهَلْ كَانَتْ خَفَافُ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ إِلَّا مُخَرَّقَةٌ مُشَقَّقَةٌ Was the socks and the shoes of the muhajirin except, except Ansar, except ripped. Ansar and muhajirin were poor people. So their shoes and their socks was all ripped. And they still used to wipe over it. Naam. Abu Thawr, in his kitab, in kitab al-Awsat, as it's in the Awsat, uh, Abu Thawr, rahimahullah, look what he said. He said, وَلَوْ كَانَ الْخَرْقُ يَمْنُعُ مِنَ الْمَسْحِ لَبَيَّنْهُ النَّبِي if that the ripping will actually affect the shoes, the Prophet ﷺ would have clarified it. The Prophet would have clarified it. Fourth thing. The fourth thing. المسح, the timing of the wiping of, of wiping. The hadiths have come in multitude narrations, as we said before, that the traveller is three days and three nights. The person who's a reside who resides for how long is it for him? Yawmun wa layla. A day and a, and a night. The question how now is where, when does the time start from? Ha. Ah. Does it start from when he first put on the socks? Or does it start from when the first time he, he, he broke his wudu? Or does it start from the first time he wiped? The strongest view is that it starts the first time it was wiped. It starts the first time it was wiped. And the reason why that is the strongest view is because the apparent hadith, the apparent uh, wording of the hadith is yamsahul muqimu yawman wa layla. The Prophet used the word masah. He wipes. So the consideration in Sharia, wa yamsahul musafiru thalath ayyam. He wipes. The Sharia didn't say when he puts it on or when he doesn't. The Sharia just mentioned the word masah. And it seems like that the masah is the wiping that is taken into consideration. As Shaykhuna, uh, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymeen mentioned in his Majmu'a al-Fatawa. And that's the, tr that's, that's the view he took. Number five. Conditioning that the person wears the Khufain or the Jawrawain upon purity. You have to wear it while state of Tahara. So what does the person do? He does full wudu, then he wipes over it. Ittafaq ahlu ilmi The scholars of knowledge have agreed upon Ittafaq, it's not khilaf, it's an issue. Huh? That is a condition. Ala ashtirati lubsul jawrabayni ala taharati liman arada an yamsah alayhima For anybody who wants to wipe over it, it is a condition, it is a shart, mandatory that you have it. And the scholars that have transmitted that ijma' or that ittafaq, that agreement, is Imam ibn Hajar rahimahullah in Fatuh al-Bari. And Imam Al-Mufaqdeen Ibn Qudam Al-Maqdisi in his Kitab Al-Mughri and also Al-Imam Al-Nawawi in his Kitab Al-Majmu' which is the Sharah of Al-Muhadzib Al-Ishaq Al-Shirazi. Uh, also Al-Imam Al-Shirazi in his Kitab Al-Muhadzib he also says لا يجوز المسح إلا أن يلبس على طهارة كاملة It is not permissible for the person to wipe over his jawrabain or his khufain except unless he has complete purity. Complete purity. Also Ibn Dakhik Al-Aid brings the issue like that as well. He brings the ittifaq. The, uh, that's the fifth. The sixth. Taking off the jawrabain or the khufain after wiping of well, after wiping after wiping over it. Does it break your wudu? Does it break your does it break your wudu? This matter there's a khilaf and there's a dispute which is much more well known dispute amongst Ahlul Ilm. So, some of them have said it doesn't break the wudu. And there's nothing on him. And there's those who said it breaks wudu. And those who have actually obli obliged on him that he washes his feet. They said he has to wash his feet if he takes it off. Uh, and then th that's, a, that's, that's what uh, takes it for him. Um, but the strongest view is what? The strongest view is that it does not affect it. It doesn't affect it. Number seven, um, wearing two socks over each other. Loops to Joe Rabin, Folka Joe Rabin, putting two socks on top of each other. 
That's permissible, of course, no doubt. If a person wears two jawrabs, two socks, uh, both of them upon tahara, purity, he comes with the conditions of having tahara, as the original ruling was. Kama huwa asalu hukum. Original ruling was. But if he puts on the second one and he's not in a state of purity, are you with me? So he put the first one on. Are you all with me? He put the first one on. So if he made you. So this is what happened. He, he done wudu. Are you all with me, brothers? He's done full wudu. Then he put his socks on. And then he wiped over it. What socks has he wiped over? First one. And then he passed the wind. The, uh, uh, basically, hours went by. He passed wind. And it got a bit cold for him. So what did he do? He wants to wear a what? But is he in a state of tahara now? He puts on the second one. At this point, it is not permissible for him to wipe over the, sec the top one. The second one. He's not allowed to wipe over the second one. It's not allowed? Yeah? Same as wearing the shoes. As long as the person wears both of them with what? Bahara. Both have to be with Bahara. Eighth. The time ending, so remember we said that the person who's in his residency, how long is it? Day and night? Uh, and as for the traveler is what? Three days and? Three nights. When that time comes to an end for each of the groups, whichever they are, the time comes to what? It comes to an end. It's finished. What is the issue that is, does his wudu become, does it go? Does his wudu go? The time finished. His day and night is over. He didn't pass no wind. Does his... Does his wudu? Naam. Fi dalik aqwal, and there are many views regarding this, uh, this one. Some of the scholars, they said, he, yeah, his wudu goes. Some of the scholars, they condition that he washes his legs. Because his legs were missing at the beginning. They said, because this is the missing part, wash it. And then some of them said there's nothing on him. And his tahar is pure. And Imam al rahimahullah, he strengthened the, the last view, which is that there's nothing on him. And he says that this view, Imam al rahimahullah, in his majmu'ah, he says that the view, second last one, which is that there's nothing on him, he said that this view is narrated and transmitted to us that is the view of Ibn al-Mundir, who said that this is the view of Hassan al-Basri. And it also this is the view of Qatada. And this is also the view of Sulaiman ibn Harb. And he said, Nawi says that this is a very powerful choice. And it's also a view taken by Dawood al Zahiri. And because of that, we will say that that's the strongest view that we're going to take. Because there's no evidence that came that said his wudu will break. Naam. And the fact that there's no evidence that says, um, and we know that the Prophet ﷺ told us the only thing that breaks the wudu is what? Hadith. That the person does call of nature, or he passes wind, or something like that. Anything other than that cannot break your wudu. And anyone who says it does, فَعَلِهِ بِالْبَيِّنَةِ He has to bring the evidence and the proof. Nine. Does the person have to come with a prerequisite of an intention? Does he have to come with an intention before the wiping? And does he have to specify in his intention? Meaning, does he have to have in his mind for how long he's going to wipe? Does he have to have that intention? Does he have to? No, he doesn't have to. He does not. He does not have to. And the reason is because this action is connected and attached. It's like, for instance, uh, it's like a person uh, who buys a cloth to protect his aura so he can pray the salah. He doesn't have to have an intention to wear these clothes so he can protect his aura to pray the salah. He won't say this is a condition that you have to have an intention that you're, that you're saying that I'm wearing this clothes for what reason? Huh? Satr al awra La yushtaratu alayhi It is not obligatory uh, that the person conditions in his heart that he's saying I'm wearing this clothes for satr al awra Naam. 